I actually had a chance to read a document that was circulated in the California Correctional Peace Office Association newsletter, and it's called The Peacemaker. And they had an article about Pelican Bay, and the name of the article actually was A Fate Worse Than Death. At the end of the article, they posted predators and nonconformists. California now has a place for you. The nonconformist is basically your political prisoner who doesn't conform to the prison culture. Or smoke some hay. You bitches wanna throw me up in Pelicans Bay. Call me an animal up in the system. But who's the animal that built this prison? Who's the animal invented lower living? The projects. These uh, people have been exposed to the normal operating of an open institution. Uh, in most cases, they have extreme assault, assault backgrounds, uh, sometimes even homicide. Me, one who was sent to Marion, not for killing anyone. Not for stabbing anyone, but giving a speech to the NAACP about the conditions and the racism in USB Terre Haute. The warden said, whatever takes place in this prison, we deal with it in here. It's not for the outside. I told him he was a coward, but he was scared, and I'm going to say what I have to say, and whatever happened to me will happen. They put me in shoe, special housing unit. They told me I would be transferred. It was a disciplinary transfer because they said my speech. And this is what you know, they write a bogus incident because my speech was an inflammatory speech and could have disrupted the orderly running of the institution. And therefore, I would be sent to USB Marion. Directly from court to Marion, uh, and we put you in a prison there, and when I appealed it, uh, because you're only supposed to be punitive transfers, you're only supposed to go to these prisons if you had committed an egregious violation of some other kind of country, you were sent here, and uh, they said because your political actions and political beliefs, uh, this is the only effective management control we have here. When you have this type of influence and authority, and the system knows you have it, now you understand what this whole gang unit, control unit, torture, this lockup thing is about. Many of us weren't let back out in the population because of the influence that we did have. We may not have been the rank leaders, as people like to call it, and things of that nature, but we had a lot of respect and influence with Latinos and Blacks, to the point that they wouldn't question our word. If we told them, yeah, pick that book up, read it, it's good, they would. But if the administrators said it, they said, fuck you, I'm not reading that. They didn't like that, because they didn't control the situation. So therefore, they had to destroy the people who did control these situations. Like I told you, they ship out 200 of us. This is sometime down the road, and you get back to the prison now, and it's racially divided. And what happens is, you know, you get guards, white guards, go to white prison and say, you know, those niggas are doing this and they're doing that, and, blah, blah, blah. and then they go to the black shit, watch out for these white guys, man. They're talking all kinds of nigger shit and, you know, burning you guys out. And unfortunately, the guys that wouldn't buy into that are out in the federal system. When they shipped us out, I was in the first five that went. I was in the federal system for three years, nine months. All right, so when we all finally came back, it was a whole new prison system. And it was divide and conquer. This is the methodology of the Department of Corrections. It does not rehabilitate. It has no vested interest in rehabilitation. It's only interest is in control. Run through our homes, throw us in cells, rather us in jail than free on the streets. Because if we free on the streets, we can speak to our peace. The management control unit in New Jersey was built for Sundiata Akoli. Um, Ojiri Latulo is still there. You know, Russell Maroon Schultz is still in a control unit. There are hundreds. For the people of my generation, the work that, that we're doing now and the work that we've done is, is compelling. It's a lifetime commitment. You know, we made a promise to those dead and alive to abolish these torture chambers. And I think with Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo and the secret prisons throughout, U.S. prisons throughout the world, people are beginning to understand, you know, that the United States